everyone, and God bless you. It is an honor. It is an honor. It is an honor to come before you and to offer words of encouragement, words of enlightenment. Amen. My God, I know this is stressful time, this strenuous time. It's time. It, it, these are the time that if you're not grounded in the Lord, struggles will come and you will begin to doubt your very existence in the Lord. Amen. My God. Uh, uh, today we're coming back with part two of you shall have whatsoever you say. And remember what I said, the word uh, 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 say in the Greek theme, it means a consistent saying. You can't say it once and expect it, it's a consistent, you're consistent with your uh, uh, petition to God and you're faithful with your consistent. All right, uh, uh, before we get any further in there, let's open up with prayer. And once again, this is Pastor Milton Hopper coming before you. Uh, and just asking for your prayers and your just consistent prayer and uplifting and strengthening each other. Oh, amen? Amen. I'm coming to you from the sanctuaries of the Upper Room Church in North Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, where we work with a group of people that is excited about what God is doing in these last days. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would give me the tongue of the wise to speak a word in season to him that is weary. God, I pray that, that you would strengthen every leader, Lord God, every pastor, every fivefold ministry that in operation, Lord God, to enhance your kingdom and forward your word. God, I pray for this nation, Lord God, for the stability of this nation, for the stability of the leadership of this nation. God, we we take your word seriously when we are to pray for the governments. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. We thank and we praise you. And the people of the Most High God say, Amen. Amen. Once again, I thank you, God. And like I said, I don't take it for granted the opportunity to speak in your hearing and to be a part of your listening pleasure. Amen. Amen. This is part two. Or you shall have whatsoever you say. Part two. And thank the Lord. Uh, uh, uh. Let's look at the scripture. Uh, I believe uh, uh, in our first part one, we came from Matthew. Today, we want to use the same event, but we're going to take it from Mark standpoint. Amen? Uh, uh, in our first, in part one, we took the standpoint of Matthew. So now we're looking at a, 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 a Mark viewpoint. Mark 11, which come from Mark 11, verse 22 through 24. And I hate to use the term of very familiar past of scripture because sometimes the things that are familiar with it, we forget it. Amen? All right, so I pray that we can get a deeper understanding of this scripture. Uh, Mark 11, begin at verse 22 here at the beginning of God's word. And Jesus answered straight unto them, and Jesus said unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whatsoever, that whosoever, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, think of, keep that word in mind, shall not doubt in his heart, in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe ye shall receive them, and you shall have them. 
Amen. You shall have whatsoever you say. And like I said earlier, that word is say in the Greek, Femi, P H E M I. It means uh, uh, you make an uh, exclamation, you're making a declaration. It's a consistent thing. It ain't something that you say once in a while, but you believe it. You become repetitive with it. Lord, I believe this. You get up every day. That would be your declaration. You shall have whatsoever you say. It also comes from the from the uh, uh, the Hebrew word, I believe, ruah, rivers. My God, a continual flowing each day. You continually to say this. You continually base your life around what you say. That's how faith comes. By hearing, hearing the word of God. You hear the word on a consistent basis. And it builds your faith. Amen. You shall have whatsoever you say. Ah, oh, God. Can I preach in here today? My God, for the name of the Lord, it's a strong tower and the righteous run into it. And they are saved. Yes, yes, yes. You shall have whatsoever you say. Whatsoever. Whether it be positive or whether it be negative. You shall have whatsoever you say. My God. And, and one of the things that I really want to point out in law with dealing with me that too many times we have a mixture of faith and fear. Oh, God. That's one of the things that hinders what we say and us believing what we say. Oh, God. Faith mixed with fear will cause us to doubt. And let me show you in the scripture. This is uh, Mark chapter 9. And this is one of the things that, that really came to me. I, I know we're familiar with Mark chapter 9 when the man was bringing his son to Jesus. The Bible says that Oftentimes, he would cast himself from fire. He would cut himself, and and Jesus would begin to speak to him about healing and, and about his faith. And the man replied in Mark 9 and 24, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Wow. That's mind-boggling, ain't it? You believe, but help thou my unbelief. Lord, have mercy. So we believe, but there's an area of unbelief that rears this ugly head when I begin to move forward in the word of the things of God. Ah, God, can I preach in there? So, uh, 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 what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, ask yourself, how is your faith today? Some days we feel like we can conquer the mountain. And some days we feel like barely getting out of the bed. What is it? What is it? Many of us believe or know or have faith. But we struggle to manifest that faith in certain times. Oh, God. So we believe God. And we know we have faith. Our problem is, is getting faith to be manifest when it needs to be manifest. Lord, have mercy. As a man told Jesus, Lord, I believe but help out my unbelief. So my thing is, how is it that we can have whatsoever we say when the thing that we say, the enemy come right along and calls us to doubt? 
what we said, what we believe. So right there, we're dealing with an oxymoron. We're dealing with things that we know won't work. Let me give you another scripture to substantiate that. Glory to God. And James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. The word of the Lord says that, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, oh God, not vacillating back and forward. I think a lot of times we wrestle between pessimistic and being optimistic. And what we do, we, we believe for the best, but prepare for the worst. My God, it's really time to trust God. James, let's look at the scripture. James chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith not wavering, for he that waver is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let him, but let not the man that think he shall receive, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man, is unstable in all this way, wavering. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. When you're wavering, that means you're vacillating back and forth. You're inconsistent. My God, you're inconsistent with your loyalty to God. One day I love the Lord, one day I trust the Lord, and the next day, uh, one day I believe God loved me, I know God loved me, I know God cares for me, and the next day, do God really love me? Do God really care for me? Can I count on God? Can I trust God? So you see why it's difficult sometimes to have whatsoever we say. My God, I'm a firm believer that when we finish this three-part lesson, I believe that we're going to be on a path that we can ask and have that sure foundation that God will do and we shall have whatsoever we say in the positive realm the thing that God wants us to have. Amen? Amen. We thank the Lord. My God. And, and one of the things that that we all probably have seen from time to time, and we probably have been guilty of this ourselves, over years, we've seen some Christian or people try to even function with faith and unbelief at the same time. Wow. <laughs> My God. Don't you know that will wear you out? That will have you so messed up from a mental standpoint. Don't even look at the spiritual aspects right now, but from a mental standpoint, trying to function in faith and unbelief at the same time. Unbelief. Ah, oh, God. That's why we all should echo what the uh, uh, what the young man told Jesus. Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. I need help in the area where I speak faith. I believe you, but there are areas where the enemy try to, or there are areas where I may allow unbelief to try to creep in. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Put it under the blood. Amen? Ask yourself again, how is your faith today? My God, Lord, have mercy. 
we can, you know what I'm saying? We can act in faith, yet be wavering because of doubt and unbelief. My God, I can read the word. I can read the word. And as I'm reading the word, the word will tell me, you have the ability to do this. Christ in you, your hope of glory. But yet and still, I could doubt the fact, Lord, I know your word works, but will it work for me? My God. My thing is trying. <laughs> oh, my God. Try the Lord. Try the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Uh, uh, so we can we can speak to our mountain, so supposedly in faith. We can speak to our mountain, so supposedly in faith, yet doubting that, that we will actually see the thing that we spoke come to pass. And I was, me and my wife was present once. We were, we were present. Uh, this was years ago. Where we seen where faith was being preached. This was years ago. We were watching uh uh, 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 a TV evangelist years ago. I don't even know if uh, uh, he's still in the ministry. No name. And one of the things that they were trying to uh, 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 get some fun to do a wing in an area of ministry. It was from out of state and and the word had the people going. The people were really behind the word. And they were chiding. We can do it. We can do it. And they were all on board. But what happened afterward, they were, it was on a broadcast. We were private to the broadcast. What happened was that after the broadcast was over, the person turned to the people that were doing the uh, 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 the mediation, the uh, uh, the analysts, and they turned and asked for prayer for their faith to believe in what they were trying to get done. And the reply back to the person was, that, "Didn't you just preach a message of faith?" To the people and the reply was that was for the people it's a dangerous thing when we get to the place where we don't believe what we're preaching how do we expect people to believe it when those of us that putting it out don't believe it amen and and i did not feel critical of the person. I didn't feel judgmental. It hurt my heart because I felt like at the time the person was just being honest at where they were. It, did you know as people of God, as people in general, it's hard to, this is my personal opinion, I think it's hard sometimes to be honest with people and let them know where you at to receive prayer because for so long we have been under criticism or judgment but and i feel that's why we don't get as many response in the area of people asking for prayer or people being honest with where they're at because sometimes they know the criticism and the things that they may face for being honest but my thing is, if you need prayer in an area, if you like this, this man that told Jesus, Lord, I believe. 
but help thou my unbelief. My God, it's not about what you think about me or what you feel about me. It's what the Lord feels. And I want to be in the place where it's like Samuel. The Bible says not a one of Samuel's words fell to the ground. Hey, glory to God. The Bible says when a man weighs, please the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace. My God, Lord, how mercy. And the Bible says the Lord will give you the desire of your heart. But let me, let me expound on that a little bit. My God, when you get to the place where your desire be God desire, then he will give you the desires of our heart. So you have to work your way to that. Because, you know, God ain't going to give you desires of the contrary to his will. If it's against the purpose of God, come on. Glory to God. But once your relationship, once we get our relationship lined up with the word and in line with God, we're going to be asking for things that are necessarily for our purpose, for our walk, and for the will of God. And my God, and even when we ask for things, you shall have whatsoever you say. My God. Even before we begin to vocalize that God will deal with us, even about our trial, Lord, I want to get out of this. I want this to end. I want this pandemic to end. God will let you know uh, uh, the season you're in, the season that things. You know what I'm talking about? So we, so you will have what you whatsoever you say, but it come with our understanding of God. And our walk with God and our purpose with God. Amen. My God, Lord, how mercy. And, and, and I say it all that to say this. When we dealing with doubt, think about what the man say. He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. So somewhere down, doubt always have a way of rearing his ugly head. My God. So one of the things that as I began to break down doubt and I thought about even Thomas, I mentioned this in the, in part one, even with Thomas, he told Jesus, I will not believe the resurrection and you being and, and all of this until I put my hand in your womb. And Jesus told me that Thomas, you believe because you can touch, you can feel the womb. But he said, more blessed are those that believe but have not yet seen. So, my God, so we have to deal with a level of doubt. And doubt is our enemy to your faith and to us believing God will do what he said he will do. And I really begin to... Uh, uh, to break down that word doubt. And, and, you know, and like I said, I'm not the one that's trying to be deep. I, I just want to give an understanding that would help us. Let me give you some information concerning doubt. Doubt, it, doubt number one, is, di, is a divided loyalty. Doubt. And, and that's what James was iterating when he said, that let not that man think he should receive anything of the Lord. Because James called it double-minded. So there you, therein lies divided loyalty. My God. And the, uh, 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 the Latin word for doubt is dubitare. D-U-B-I-T-A-R-E, which means two minds. Two mindset. My God. So we're going into this thing with a double mindset. Okay. <laughs> Let me break it down a little further. We're going into this thing with an alternative plan. Lord, if this don't work, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to seek your face on this. I'm going to hope you do it. 
But if you don't, I got an alternative plan. Oh, God, come on here. Some people live their life with an alternative plan. If this don't work, my God, you shall have whatsoever you say. Lord, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Are you getting anything out of this? Pray my strength in the Lord. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus. So it means it mean two mindsets, double mind, two minds. Wow, a divided mind. So when we're dealing with doubt, we're dealing with divided loyalty. Oh, and by the way, let me give you a tidbit. Make sure you tune in for part three. Part three, we're going to cover more this area of loyalty. And the area of teaching that God gave me, this is, you know the way they do in programs and stuff and what they do, they give you a preview of a common attraction to make sure you tune in. Amen. So I want to give you a preview of part three so you can tune in. Part three was one of the things the Lord spoke to me. Part three is, uh, this is one of the things the Lord spoke to me. Loyalty is one thing, but value is another. My God, let that soak in to part three. Loyalty is one thing, but value is another. Value is totally different. You can be loyal, but yet and still lay your pillow, lay your head on a pillow sometimes. But value, value, my God. Can God, do God value you and what you bring to the table? All right. Okay, let's go back to today's lesson. So, doubt is a divided loyalty. And when you're dealing with a divided loyalty, that's a question there. Like I said earlier, that always rears its head. Do God really love me? Do God really care about me? Then if he do, then why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Why are my children this? Why is this happening? Why do I lose my job? Why did this happen? Why is pandemic, or, you know, hey, time and chance happen to us all. But divided loyalty is used by the enemy to cause us to live in uncertainty. Wow. Wow, to live in uncertainty. My God, you ain't really sure about your walk with God, about God's love for you. And, and, and you know what? When you have divided loyalty, or when you walk in uncertainty, it's easy to be swayed. Oh, my God. It's easy to be taught. It's easy to change allegiance. It's easy to change loyalty. Amen? My God. My God, and when you're dealing with uncertainty, divided loyalty, you're dealing with instability. My God. That takes us back to James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. You're wavering. Our life become wavering. We vacillate back and forth. Sometimes you feel saved. Some days you don't feel saved. <laughs> My notes just fell on the floor, but hey, we're all good. Ain't that right? Glory to God. We still can work this thing. So, think about this. Paul, some of the writings of Paul, 
he started off with, I know. I know. Not that I think, not that I hope, not that I wish. He said, I know. He said, I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded. So, this walk can't be based on a lot of uncertainties in our lives, a lot of divided loyalty, a lot of divided mind, and that's what I said earlier, doubt. The, uh, uh, the bottom line to doubt is divided, a divided mind. My God, we cannot decide whether God really loves me, whether he cares, even whether I love God. This is something you have to know. Amen. Glory to God. My God, thank the Lord. Even though circumstance may arise, circumstance may arise, and circumstance will arise in this walk to make you challenge what you believe or may even challenge what you believe. But down in your knower, you ought to know These 35 years of walking with the Lord, I know that God loved me. But do I always please the Lord? No. Do I always do what the Lord tell me to do? No. Do I let him down sometimes? Yes. But think about this. I thank the Lord that even when I'm not faithful to him, he's faithful to me. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, my God. So, two things we're going to do. We're going to stop trying to function with faith and unbelief at the same time. Amen? Amen. Lift your hand and say, I'm going to stop functioning with faith and unbelief at the same time. Amen. We got that. We got that. The second thing. I'm going to stop mixing faith with fear. Amen. Boy, that's a, hey, we on the way. We on the way to having whatsoever we say. Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. We ready. My God, Lord, have mercy. Does this bless you? Give me a shout out. Amen. Glory to God. So we can begin to speak to that mountain. Whatever your mountain is, you can begin to speak to it. My God, let me ask you something. Wonder why is it so easy for us to speak doubt? Believe that things won't happen. When it's so easy to, Lord, I believe your report. Could it be that over time we have allowed certain debris in our portals, our ears, our eyes? What we, you know what I'm talking about? One of the things that me and my wife do uh, uh, from time to time, we anoint our portals. We anoint what we see, what we hear, what we speak. You want to, we, we want to keep ourselves in the place so that if God speaks, mm -mm, not if he speaks, when he speaks, that we'll be able to hear, discern it, and move accordingly as God has directed us. Amen? Amen. I almost finished. I almost finished. There's some, a couple of more notes I want to, my God. Like I said, I talked about how doubt brings uncertainty and I talked about how doubt brings instability but doubt also put us in a way where we become pessimists you know what I'm talking about we we hope for the best but prepare for the worst and we also have an alternative plan if this don't work then I'll try this baby it's all, uh, it's all God, 
I know. My God. And uh, I'm reminded of a lesson that uh, uh, we, Upper Room, we put our manuscript lesson every week uh, on, on our Facebook website and on the website that I operate. And and I believe this this week's lesson was put out by one of the evangelists in our church. And it talks about how that you have what it takes to succeed. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. Christ in you, your hope of glory. My God. I remember so often, sometimes we get into the search, the church re religiosity, and we begin to do songs like, Lord, send it on down. And Lord, uh, send it on down. Stuff like everything that we need. We already have it. When Jesus bowed his head on the cross and said, it is finished, that means it is finished. Peter said, for he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness according to our knowledge of him. So that let me know if we want to do better, if we want to be better, we got to get into this word. We got to increase our knowledge of God and his purpose for our lives. Amen. My God, I remember hearing a preacher say years ago, and that stuck with me. And I began to habitually change what I say and what I do and how I educate myself on the word. One of the things that he said, to change what's in your hand. You got to change what's in your head. My God. Knowledge is powerful, God. Knowledge is powerful. Glory to God. Yeah, we're going through a time of unrest. We're going through a time of racial divide. We're going through a time where it seems hard for, uh, uh, well, difficult for certain people to step up on the front line and make a decisive decision to stand up for what's right. My God, a lot of the things that are facing up, it's not about, it's not a black issue or white issue. These are human rights things. My God, Lord, how mercy. My God. And, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of counterproductive to think that we can live as Christians, but yet and still go to heaven and have the mindset that we have. Come on. There are some things have to change. Lord, have mercy. I believe that we shall have whatsoever we say. My God. And one of the things that God wants us to have is love. Portray love. Glory, glory, glory. Lord, have mercy. A few more areas, and, and we're going to let you go into uh, the next time. And we're going to, like I say, we're going to finish out part three. Or you shall have whatsoever you say with loyalty is one thing, but value is another. My God, Lord, have mercy. And stop living, like I said earlier, stop living with the idea of I'm going to look, I'm going to be hopeful for the best, but I'm going to pep. Prepare for the word. Mm -mm. Two things, two things I want us to get out of this. And we're gonna and we're gonna continue to pray. This is what we want us to focus on. And and one of the things that I found out that in teaching and sometimes we can give people too much to focus on. And I believe in giving you enough to help you during this time of trouble or trepidation or over this hump. Amen? So two things I want us to take away from this. You know, all Sunday school lessons have what you call a central theme or focus about. Two things I want us to focus on. Stop mixing faith with fear and stop trying to operate or function with faith and unbelief at the same time. Amen?
All right. I love you and thank God for you. Thank God for you tuning in and thank God for you making us a part of your weekly listening pleasure. Amen. Amen. Why don't you shoot me uh, uh, just, uh, just a note that you're praying and that you encourage and the word is blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you were blessed, you were strengthened. God, that you will burn, you will bring us to a point that we'll begin to walk in, walk more in your purpose, Lord God. We will begin to speak to the mountain in our lives. The thing, the areas that where the enemy is really trying to cause us to doubt, that we'll begin to walk with certainty not uncertainty in the name of jesus i pray that the lord will keep you and you will be kept he will bless you and you will be blessed may the lord bless you and may the lord keep you may the lord cause his face to shine upon you and may the lord be gracious unto you in jesus name bless you peace out